What's good? What's good? Whew. Just doing an evening stroll with your boy Rico. Come on in here, y'all. I'm so glad the rain looks like it's, it's finally gone away. Because, uh, man, that thundering and that wind and raining, as far as Grump would say, raining like it's from the bottom up. Just rain. Fred Berry, what's up, bro? Just, I just kind of over the April showers, but I know we're not even halfway through the month quite. So, all right, it says April showers bring May flowers. Okay, I'm with it. Damn. So, anyway, I got a couple of lives I need to do, a couple of videos I need to do. So, I'm going to start off with this one. This seems to be hot on the presses, hot off the presses. This whole Cam Newton. You know what? And this shouldn't even make news. How come men can't say what the fuck they want to say? Wow, I shouldn't have cussed. But how come men just can't speak the truth, the honest, the honest truth about today's relationships? We got some, and I think what makes it so difficult is because we got so many panda bears out there. What's this on here? We got so many people pandering. Kevin, what's up, my man? We got so many black dudes, so many men, period, pandering to women. It's just ridiculous. And I said, they obviously didn't grow up in the 70s like I did in the 80s when pimping was king. One thing about pimps, they didn't pander to no, to no women. And these little beta male simps out here scared to say what they really want to say, but scared of not, I guess, the coochie train is going to come to a halt, a screeching halt. I don't know. Because one thing I learned about sex, you either get it with your conversation, if you can't work it with your conversation, reach in your pocket and get your compensation, you hear me? So I don't understand why no one else has figured that out. And if you can't talk her into it, buy her into it. That's, it is what it is. So I don't, I don't understand the difficulty. I don't know why so many men, they, reach, they, they risk, their, risk their integrity, their self-respect, their character, all it just to, just to appease something that is plentiful. Coochie comes by the pound. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So anyway, let me get to what Cam Newton said. Just paraphrasing. But he spoke the entire truth. You know, Cam Newton may be considered what a, a high value man. But any man can say this who is worth his weight in salt. He said, dang. Uh, as, respect, as he relates relate to these so-called modern women today. These boss bitches. He said, but yeah, you might be a boss bitch, but you, can you cook clean? Do you, you know, cater to a man? Do you know when to hush? You know, and, and you know, he likes it because Cam Newton is coming from a, from a perspective that a lot of us in the black community can't come from. That is having a loving mother and father in the household who raised, who raised you always. Cam Newton's parents were together for over 30, like, like 40 years. So he watched his mother behave as a feminine, sweet, submissive woman and his father be the leader of the household who accommodated her submissiveness. See, that has been lost. Ask your grandma and grandpa who's been together 45 to 60 years how they did it. That had to be that dynamic in order for that to work. You can't have an alpha female and an alpha male that work. It's going to be a bunch of mess. I mean, trying to work the relationship. And so what Cam Newton said was the honest to God truth. And unfortunately, there's some men who came out against them because they don't know any better. Their women probably running them. If they have one, their wives are probably running them because he was speaking about a wife. And then, well, Cam Newton, you didn't marry the woman who had four children about you. He probably didn't think of it as a wife and material, but he didn't go out and get other children from other women, though. He just stayed in their relationship. And so, to all the women who are just so upset and trying, they're tweeting about him, trying to get, no, I call it clout chasing. There's really nothing wrong with what he said. And he's going he's gonna to respond to the foolishness on his own uh, podcast, if you, ever watch his, if you ever watch his podcast. And so I really don't know what the big hoopla is, but really, I do. Because you got a bunch of women, uh, this generation, these millennial women and these zillennial young women out here, their, their minds are really ruined. 
and they wonder why nobody comes to relationships. Their minds are really ruined. They really believe they can do everything a man does and come home and behave as a man with a man in the household. One thing about men, contrary to popular belief, men know exactly who and what they want. If, if a lot of black women aren't getting proposed to because he didn't want to propose to you ugly, meanie, fatty, uh, arrogant, ego-driven, lazy, non-cooking, big mouth, chatterbox, worrisome, aggravating, nagging, aggregant, maybe because of that. Yeah, we have sex with all these people, but that doesn't mean they want to put a ring on it. Because see, when I see in these uh, on these Facebook pages and YouTube channels and these particular women, and we're talking about our community, but we can say to America across the board, but black women seem to have the lowest record when it comes to getting proposed to in their group. Hold on one second, Shama. Hold on, well, I'm going to wait. But anyway, they seem to have the lowest record compared to other groups of women. So I'm talking to our women. And they wonder why. They, they, they seem to wonder why black men aren't really just proposing to them, you know, in, in, in large numbers. But first, let me put out the truth as it relates to black men and black women, women's relationships. 86% of black men are married to black women. Because you know you got all these sisters say, well, they're not really marrying black women at all. They're all marrying out. Most of them are marrying out. All the good ones are marrying out. That ain't the same goes across all economic uh, uh, categories, educational categories. So black men are getting married to black women. However, you have a large number of them of black women who will ever see marriage. And even if they try, white men are lining up to marry them. No. They got enough to choose from in their own race. And the number one group that white men are marrying, if it's not a white woman, is the Asian woman. So, because the Asian woman, right close neck to the Latina, are the two top married, most married women, and if not the country, definitely the world. Because all men are chasing Latinas and Asian women. Not because they all fine and got bodies built like brick houses and any of that. It's because of their attitudes and their culture of their people. You know, they grew up, most of them grew up in what's called a patriarchal society where they respect men. See, this modern society, this feminist modern society in America, they're losing out because they don't know how they've, they've purposefully rejected uh, femininity. And if you got a masculine chick and call herself got a husband... Well, he's a beta male simp. He's the feminine energy. A lot of times, yeah. And all that equality shit, well, y'all can have it. I'm an older cat. I'm just in here chilling. I'm chuckling off these people in these relationships. But Cam Newton told no lies. Because he's in a position, well, this is the kind of woman I want. All of us can be in a position to say the kind of woman I want. Or the kind you'll put up with. Because we're all built differently, I know. What's up, David? You in there, bro? Was that Claude? Claude Brown, what's up? So we're all built differently. And so what Cam did was, was is what America hopes that no other black man of a particular status and fame won't say, is what he said. So they immediately jumping on him and trying to get him to shut down and to discourage any other man, particularly black men, to speak this way. And that's why when people are made famous, they have to almost like sign a contract to close their mouths on issues that may actually move people in a positive direction to make change. Now, Cam was talking about twerking and and talking about foolishness, no, no, uh, what they're talking about in the rap songs. No one would have had a problem. But when he talked about something that could actually change the minds, change the minds of men. Well, that famous guy needs to be shut down. So all of the hater ass unmarried chicks, because I believe that 90 percent of the married women agreed with him. What's going on here? Hey, what's up, Faye Riles? Mrs. Faye. Let me see. Make sure I say your last name correct. Is it Riles? Oh, hey, poo poo. Anyway. <laughs> and so I think a lot of married women agree with him. So, uh, you know, I like ladies have a seat. You are married chicks have a seat. 
Because you don't know, see that what, he's, what he spoke of was married grown people language. What you should do is take a page for what he said and what other women have said. But they don't seem to listen to anybody. You seem to only respect, uh, uh, respond when a man who y'all believe has money or stature or power or if he's a preacher, you probably respond to that, but then you'll hear it, but then you ignore it. Well, when someone's really famous, you can't ignore that. But I also understand that Cam Newton also spoke on some things about the men. But there was no backlash for some reason. Isn't that something? Don't y'all know that men get talked about all the time? And we don't like, you know what? You're right. We're going to try to change that. You're right, bro. We don't get out on Twitter and Instagram and make a post. Hey, man, it's messed up what you say about black men. Yeah, we know we need to do better. Yeah, we know we need to do this and, um, you know, get our, our weight up economically and you know, go to school. We know that, man. You know, when brothers try to check each other for the better, we don't respond to it. But when women get checked, something that they should have already learned how to do, or something that would be better for them in their life, oh, they get hot under the collar. And then all of a sudden, the Twitter fingers and Instagram stuff is popping off. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the truth. But anyway, y'all, I'm not going to hold you. I just want to say that Cam Newton was right. And uh, I think all the married women agreed with him. And all the uh, single, uh, unhappy helpers that's wanted something to do, I think they jumped on this just to clout chase. And, uh, and I want more men to say what they really want out loud so we can change the tide of this feminism, this feminist foolishness. Because if those of you who are, and I guarantee, let me say this. I bet you all those women who complain, I bet if I ask them who is their Lord and Savior, they'll say Jesus Christ. I'm not going to take it there. I'm not a religious guy. I don't read the Bible, but I left the church at 12 years old. So some things I haven't forgotten. Come on now. Isn't it interesting that the women who are disagreeing with what Cam Newton said, I guarantee you, they're being the main ones sitting front seat in church, but they're ignoring what the Bible has always told them about husbands and wives submitting to your wives, I mean, submitting to your husband, and he is the leader of the home. And they all stop saying, allow him to lead. You don't allow a man to do anything. I had, a, I had an uncle back in the day, you ask him something, he'll reject it and say, I do's like I want to. Men do's like they want to. So all this, like you still like, like, we can't function without you. You can't function without us. We need to change this narrative. And men need to participate in it, particularly black men. One thing about it, you know, this may blow over after tomorrow. So I just want to share my little thoughts on it. And as I enjoy this beautiful post-rain, post-stormy day. So y'all be cool. We'll talk again in the future. Uh, I still got my book on here if y'all haven't bought it yet. It's a... Uh, the greatest pain ever felt. I want to go across the street to it. Hold on. I am. Ooh. Hold on. Y'all wait a minute. And so, yes, yeah, the greatest pain ever felt. Uh, conversation absent biological father who never want to be found. Check out the Facebook page. If you're not on my YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. Pretty much the same stuff. And uh, I'll stop it there because I have a couple more videos I need to make. So, what's up? Hold on. Let me see who this is. Jerry Lewis, what's up? Evrika, hey, sweetheart. What's good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, I got you. Ray, I got you, baby. Y'all be cool. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all enjoy the rest of your evening. Peace.